If you live and work away from the major cities, where air transportation is taken for granted, you'll be all too familiar with how constraining it can be to not have easy access to affordable and convenient flights. There are too many communities shunned by the major airlines that have to make do with whatever road or rail infrastructure is available. For wealthier travelers, private aviation is an option. But now, some companies are developing new electric and hybrid electric aircraft, like Viridian, which is working on its nine-passenger microliner. Regional Air Mobility, as some are calling it, holds out the promise of making flights by small numbers of passengers viable with direct connections to second-tier cities like Friedrichshafen in southern Germany. So today we are in Friedrichshafen, which is a medium-sized city which has an airport. It's not just an airfield, it has a full-sized, full-blown airport. And Friedrichshafen today no longer has any scheduled service. They used to have, but they no longer have. And there's quite some industry around Friedrichshafen. So imagine if you're working for a company that is supplying into a big automotive OEM somewhere else in Germany. A lot of these projects are very interdisciplinary. So we have people making business trips with cars all week long. And suddenly, local businesses or even bigger corporates can send their people to their customers and their suppliers on a fast and efficient way, while still uh, being in the normal travel budget. This type of travel obviously is accessible today. Yeah? You can charter a nine-seat aircraft, but the price is rather high, so it's rather limited for let's say people of, of high urgency or maybe of high importance or to justify the cost. But now the normal business traveler can travel privately. Well, other startups are planning new business models to change the cost structure of regional transport connections. Fly V-Bird is using artificial intelligence to develop a platform that will help travelers get the flights they need at affordable rates. It says it's going to be able to connect smaller cities an hour's flying time apart for between 150 and 200 euros. We are intending with so-called franchise airline system, this platform that we're building in the back, to operate more than 700 airplanes worldwide in the next 15 years because we will basically operate uh, and focus on the customers as a marketing platform. If you think a little bit, on the street we have something similar already. It's a black cap with white letters. Um, this is what we will stand for. So we will have operators, drivers, who are operating our airplane. So they're focusing on really having high safety standards on operating airplane. And we will match our passengers with the demand in those special markets. If you're flexible on time and on stops in between, your price will get cheaper. Why? The more flexibility you give to us in deciding how to dynamically create this every day a new flight plan, we deliver lower fares. If you want to have something more exclusive, like in a business class with legacy airlines, you will pay a higher price due to the fact of comfort. But at the start, this will be not working everywhere immediately. So we start with fixed sets of uh, ONDs. And once those fixed sets start to be dynamized, this is where AI is needed. Because you have to imagine, we will receive thousands of requests a day, and we have a fleet, a crew, and a management in behind that needs to dynamically and constantly adopt the network until three days before departure, because this is the time we lock in the flight plan, and this is where we start distributing the flight plan to our airport partners all over the world. The infrastructure is there. We don't have to build anything new. We just have to use this uh, yeah, highway we have in the air much more efficient, and this is where we need AI to just be much more um, focused on, on making this fast and, and better to the customer. In Toulouse, Aura Aero is working on a 19-seat regional airliner called the ERA. Here you have the mock-up of uh, what is called ERA for electric regional aircraft. So this is a 19 seat uh, that is in a CS23 category, so let's say the general aviation category. And uh, we do believe that the general aviation is a very good playground for, um, for developing new airplane associated with new propulsion that basically have to fulfill several goals. The first is to decarbonize. Uh, the second is to offer modern way to, uh, to travel. Uh, and last but not least, of course, to improve the safety overall. So what we're doing with this airplane is to use a blend of technology that are available on the bigger airplane 
and to bring it at an affordable cost and with a good efficiency to the smaller uh, airplane. And in particular, this airplane is the smallest of the regional uh, transportation overall. So it's an hybrid airplane, uh, so electric propulsion and with a turbo generator in the back. And the general idea is to, yeah, to move forward, to be on the market before 2030. The overall goal is to use the electric propulsion and to decouple the propulsion and the energy management. So somehow, um, the propeller uh, are driven by electric engine. And the electric engine are based on the Safran already certified electric engine. And in the back, you will find turbo generator that basically is there to transform uh, JT1 into electricity. And the idea is to play with the different uh, engine um, to minimize the consumption and optimize the efficiency overall. Viridian's microliner is expected to be able to operate up to around 250 miles. So the, the microliner is essentially a uh, nine-passenger uh, aircraft. It will be certified under CS23, level three. We'll have a dual fly deck, but will be possible to fly with single pilot under existing regulations. The experience for the passenger will be quite comfortable. You can have a, essentially a business class seat with an 18-inch width and a 32-inch pitch, which you normally find on an A320 kind of aircraft only, and not in a smaller packaging. And then the aircraft is rather classic, but the propulsion system is the main novelty here. And we have a fairly large battery system integrated in the wing. We have several smaller modules that sit uh, on the wing ribs. Yeah, if, if there's anything heavy you need to put on an aircraft, you like to put it in the wing because of the lift force that you want to balance out. Um, and then we have a multi-engine power plant that sits in the nose with a single propeller. And the big advantage of electrification is, is that the motors are mechanically much simpler than you, you would have with a, with a gas turbine today. So for the first time we can actually um, have two or more electric motors that are electrically and mechanically segregated through freewheeling clutches on a single shaft driving a single propeller. That means we have the safety and the redundancy of a twin, but the handling qualities of a single prop, especially when you lose an engine, the pilot workload uh, can be quite significant in a traditional twin. In this case, you would lose some power, but you can really continue your flight and, and you can reach all climb range that you need. For now, Fly V-Bird is starting operations with the existing Technam P2012 aircraft. But its longer term plan envisages that it will further decarbonize operations by bringing Electra Aero's EL9 ultra short hybrid electric commuter aircraft into its network. If we look at the runway capabilities of the Electra, the current 350 airports in Europe become to be 650 airfields that we can start to connect. And yes, we could land on a football pitch. Um, this is something that we will obviously not do immediately. There will be some regulatory work behind, but this is why we do cooperate with uh, Electra so closely, because at the beginning we will use existing airfields. But this being said, that's already doubling the possibilities in Europe and worldwide on the accessible airfields. Our current airplane has already very good stall capability, so it can land on airfields below six to uh, 500 uh, meters of runway. The Electra could get that even lower, but for that, this is why the cooperation between our two companies is there. We need to learn how to use our airplane. They need to learn how to use our dynamic system and what is the perfect fit for this market. Or Aero's plans for a new regional airliner are building on technology developed for a smaller training aircraft that it's already flown. The beauty for me of the regional aviation that I do believe will be the first commercial aviation to be decarbonized. The two-seater electric that flew in December 2024 for us is a huge step toward the 19 seats. Because the electric engine is similar, it's 800 volts with supercharging capability and, uh, and it will be certified. So the next step for us is to keep flying with the, our prototype, bring four more prototypes for the two-seater between the end of this year and next year, to be on the market with a two-seater electric before the end of 2026, and in parallel, to progress in the development of the 19 seats to get the first prototype ready for ground testing at the end of 2026 to fly 2027. In parallel, we are working on the, on the building of the factory, one in Toulouse and another one in Daytona Beach in the US, uh, and the general goal, we do believe that after the first flight of the first prototype, 
we will need a solid two to three years uh, to do the certification campaign and to build the factory in the same time. So probably we, we are still targeting to be on the market before 2030, which is affordable because we're starting in 2021. So it's nine years program. So we are pretty much on track, still some challenges, but yeah, it's, it's going forward. So we just have to make it happen. The new wave of regional aircraft developers are aiming to replace equipment that in some cases has been in commercial service for several decades and is now heading for obsolescence. This involves not only new propulsion technology, but a new approach to design. We will start replacing older, similarly sized aircraft who are in service today. I would say up to 40 seats, we can probably use it as a drop-in. And then when the aircraft is proven, and we are able to obviously uh, manufacture it in high enough numbers, we think we will see networks appearing in countries like Germany, but can also be in the UK, in France, in Italy, and then in the 2030s in the United States, where this type of trouble was much more common uh, a while back where maybe uh, new commuter airlines uh, will be able to get a big portion of travelers who are not flying today at all, because the trips they are making are not compatible with the scheduled network. It won't only be airlines who are migrating to new aircraft. In Germany, Aerodienst, which flies emergency medical services to transport injured patients, is looking at how the microliner could change its missions. We are really highly interested in the, this product uh, because normally what is the mission? We uh, fly to, to one place, uh, maybe a couple of places, collect all the patients, bringing them back to Germany and have uh, various places in Germany where we uh, bring the patients to the hospitals. Um, a good scenario would be uh, we collect the four patients, for example, with our uh, 3 to 8 uh, ambulance aircraft, bringing them to one place in Germany. And uh, due to sustainability, we can use a Viridion aircraft and bringing then the patients to the various stations in Germany. It's not easy to fly in, in all the airports in Germany, but you know, with this aircraft type, we have uh, the chance to fly also on smaller airfields, closer to the hospitals, and uh, you know, of course, with a sustainable footprint. Well, I've covered the regional airline sector since the 1990s, and I can honestly say this is potentially the most consequential period of change for the industry in several decades. If you want to keep following these developments, stay with us at AINonline.com because we'll have plenty more stories and videos like this.